you're not smart enough, you're not good enough. Why do you even try? Why don't you quit now before you embarrass yourself and everybody else? You'll never make it. For 15 years, I watched my parents say the worst things they could possibly say to each other, throw things, hit each other. In the next three years, I learned from my grandparents, it doesn't have to be that way. And I worked for my grandfather in the stores for three summers, and he taught me a lot. Every day, pretty much, I got a lesson. Jimmy, you're born with your name and you die with your name. What you do with it in between is a legacy you leave behind for everybody else. Who do you want to be? These lessons from my grandparents added up over time. Eventually, I take those college entrance exams that everybody loves to take. My scores came back. My counselor stops me in the hallway. He's got my scores in his hand. He goes, Jimmy, what are you going to do with your life? I looked up at my, my counselor. And I said, I'm going to be a baseball player. Everybody knows that. And he goes, I hope so. You're too stupid to go to college. <laughs> Same period of time, I find out the person I love more than anybody in my life, the mentor, the person I held high up here on this pedestal. My grandfather, Ernest, was diagnosed with ALS. I was watching my grandfather get sicker and sicker. I was pitching, playing a summer league game. After the game, this man came to talk to me. He goes, I'm the coach at Ranger Junior College. I want you to come play baseball for me. I know about your dream. I know about your grandfather. I know about your grades. I'm going to get you classes that you can pass, which was important. You're going to pitch for me during the week. And on the weekends during the fall, you're going to go home and spend time with your grandparents in the hospital every weekend. I would pitch, and on the weekends, I would go home. I did that for four and a half months. On the last Sunday in November of 82, I kissed my grandparents goodbye at midnight. I had to get back for 8 o'clock Monday class. I told them I loved them. I got back to school at 1. At 3, my coach woke me up. He said, you need to go home. Ernest has passed away. I've already talked to all your professors. Don't worry about your finals. It'll be taken care of when you get back. You go home. You take care of your grandmother. You take care of the funeral. She does not lift another finger. So I did. To this day in Brownwood, there's never been a larger funeral take place. People came from all over the country. Everybody got to say their goodbyes to my grandfather, who lived for everybody else but himself. No grades, no scholarships, nowhere to go. Call my mom. Mom, I made a horrible mistake. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm quitting. I'm coming home. I'm done. It's time to go out in the world and start teaching and coaching kids. And that's when I found myself at Reagan County High School in Big Lake, Texas. I inherited a baseball team that had won one game each year for the three years before I got there. So the first thing I did as a head coach was I kept that one team on the schedule. You're going to respect this game as long as you're on my field and you're playing for my team. We're going to do things the right way. Athletic director and head football coach at Rain County High School pulls me aside one day to tell me if it's ever close or they're ever behind, they're going to find a way to lose. Their parents are losers. They're losers. It's just in their DNA. They're not even going to graduate from high school. They're going to work in the oil fields and gas fields like their dads and their granddads did. There's nothing you or anybody else can do about it. You have taken these kids as far as you can. See, the problem with that little talk was that two of my kids are behind the lockers changing. Before I get to my field, spread through my team like wildfire, the guy not only in charge of all the coaches, but all the kids thought they were losers. I walk down the left field line, not one kid's looking at me. I start talking about hopes and dreams and setting goals. And then my catcher looked at me dead in the eye and he goes, why are you telling us to chase our dreams if you're not willing to do it yourself? We think you still want to play. And I said, no, sir, I want to stay married. Thank you very much. But coach, the way you teach us the game, we know your heart's still in it. You teach us how to act and react to every situation that comes up. We know what the other team's going to do before they do it. What came out of the deal was if they won a district championship, which the school had never done in baseball, I had to try out again. But forget about the bet. But in the district championship game, we're down by three runs in the last inning, and history would dictate we're not going to come back and win that game. I watched this group of kids that nobody believed in, including themselves, come back, score four runs, win. It is one of the best sights I've ever seen in my life. They're hugging each other, they're hugging the trophy, they're hugging their parents. This kid on my team needs to see tears in my eyes. And when he sees me, he starts giggling. Big fat coach in driver's seat, crying like a baby. Pats me on the shoulder, walks by, goes, we did our part, now it's your turn. I have to go do this. Every kid on the bus, coach, we did our part, now it's your turn. I find a tryout, my dad helps me find it. I made a promise to a group of kids that if they did something nobody thought they could do, I would try to do something I know I can't do. Embarrassing, humiliating, I can't do anything about that. I made a promise, I'm living up to it. The young guy catching me who just graduated from high school gives me a sign for a fastball. I wind up, I throw it as hard as I can. I look over the catcher's head behind the screens, gasway the scout, shaking his radar gun. 
I do not even throw hard enough to register. Gasway, the scout, meets me in my car. He said, well, son, I don't know you've done your time off, but the first pitch you threw without warming up was 94. Everything after that went up to 98. The last thing he said to me as I got ready to drive home was, don't be surprised if you get a phone call. The kids were right. I didn't embarrass myself. Drive an hour and 10 minutes home. It wasn't one phone call, it was 12. And we were not the first ones home. So my ex-wife hangs up the phone, turns around and said, so where have we been? My oldest daughter, who's four at the time, and holds on to me every time she can, is holding on to my pants as she looks up at her mother and goes, we're not supposed to tell you. <laughs> she looked back at me and she said, what were you thinking? I said, I'm a man I'm not supposed to think. She goes, what are you going to do now? I said, the same thing I was going to do before. I'm good at coaching these kids. I'm trained for that. I'm successful at that. I win everywhere I go. That's what I'm good at. This thing over here, this baseball dream, has never, ever worked. I've wanted to play since I was five. It's never worked. She said, you better listen to phone calls. They wanted me to come back in two days and throw again to see if I could actually throw that harder if my arm had fallen off. Because I'm telling my kids they want me to come back and throw again. My kids go, Coach, you told us if we ever had our dream in front of us, you'd chase it no matter what. Two days later, I go back and throw again. It rained so hard they had to hand me a brand new baseball every pitch. Sliding up to my knee in mud every time I landed, 98 every pitch. Our big league general manager's there. He goes, you can smile, you're gonna be in Texas tomorrow. And I just looked at him and I was stunned. I was like, what? He goes, you're in the big leagues. I'm trying to process how in three months I've lost 60 pounds. I've gone from grading papers, science papers, and report cards to autographs and doing interviews. All because of a group of kids who when I pushed them, they pushed back. They got their coach to go to the big leagues who couldn't even believe in himself at the time. My grandfather had this saying, every day I heard it for three years, remember who you are. It took me until years later to get what he meant. Remember who you are is simple. Don't do anything you wouldn't have anybody see you do. It's not what you do when you know people are watching. It makes you who you are. It's what you do when nobody's watching you at all. That makes you who you are. That's character. That's my grandparents. And if you make it just about you, you're never going to go anywhere. It's when you make it about something bigger than you. Be a mentor for somebody. Be a dream maker. Be a team player. Nothing is impossible in this world.